Y'all get it off for Angelo and the Brain Ball one time. Woo! Mike and Drew, appreciate y'all. Y'all, I think Caprio might pull it off. He might date everyone in 2020. You know, consent or not. He might just pile right on through everybody. Y'all remember Ryan Ramel got that pregnant roller skating derby lead? I heard their sponsor was going to be Planned Parenthood. They would just help one another out. That's a good joke for y'all. <laughs> hey, Liam Bird, you know I'm anti foot fetish? Hell yeah. He got excited, thought I was talking about Antifa. <laughs> <laughs> Logan Paul calling out Conor McGregor. <laughs> First of all, he's got like 40 pounds on Conor. Trying to play the high road. Oh, the guy punched an old guy in the head. Yeah, that was a jerk-off move. But this fella interviewed corpses. Right? In Suicide Forest, y'all heard about that? He's trying to play the high road. If Logan Paul and his brother were locked in a cage with me, I would break 416 bones in less than a minute. And I got a broken neck and I got to hobble my ass up here every week. Don't call out a professional, you look stupid. <laughs> you know, when I was a youngin', my daddy used to say, when he ever see a little newborn baby, he said, Tapper, look at that little bitty baby. She's fresh out the box. <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't know how funny that was till I was an adult. I was six years old. I was like, fresh out the box, okay? Like a new toy. <laughs> he was talking fresh out the cooter. <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't know. I was six. Something like that. My daddy taught me how to handle myself and the weapon. I never seen him hold a gun, but he taught me how to use any kind of weapon. He did two and a half tours in Vietnam. First thing, you never ask a Vietnam vet how they did a half a tour. It's not, it's not smart. I was six, I didn't know. I was like, how'd you do a half a tour? He's like, uh, I don't know, everyone got fucked up, I guess. But he taught me, he wanted to make sure I knew how to handle myself if some stuff went down. And we were at the arcade, you know, they had them little pellet guns back in the day, you'd have to shoot out the star. My dad was a gangster. The only time I seen him hold a weapon was when this guy at the arcade was egging him on. He's like, oh, you can't, what are you doing? You can't, you don't want to win a bear for your boy? He was egging him on. And my dad turned and looked at him. He said, I could shoot the eye out of gerbil, a Richard Deere's asshole from a thousand yards. <laughs> I shit you not, my dad picked up that pellet gun and went, he shot out the paper around the clip, the whole paper fell down. My daddy turned to that boy and said, you give my son the biggest damn Fozzie Bear you got. I like Fozzie Bear. That's the story about my dad. I like Fozzie Bear. <laughs> I went down to Lynchburg, Tennessee, where he was from. And then I went up to Nashville, and I was hitting on some country girls. I thought I'd make up the swag, mix up the swagger, you know what I mean? I turned it around on them. You know how people have them cheesy pickup lines? I switched it up, I went down to Nashville, and I was like, are you from New Jersey? You're the only seven I see. <laughs> That's just a joke, I love Jersey girls, I'm gonna marry me one. I love you, Brighton Barbie, night. 